Do you think the Lakers regret getting into the ball business? No. In the last 10 games, when a, when a player's in his first or second year, I don't care about his overall stats. Is he getting better? In his last 10 games, Lonzo is averaging 14 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, and he's shooting 40% on threes. Mm. Guy can play. Now, he's not a dynamic athlete. He's never going to be a knockdown. He's never going to score at the rim. Right. But look at this roster. Outside of Brandon Ingram, maybe Kuzma, you don't have you don't have the viability to move good pieces. This kid can play. When he left with that injury, Kuzma's game evaporated. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. We because the, the question was regret. And so I'm gonna back it all the way up. If this was the night before the draft, yeah. right now, and they knew LeVar yeah. was gonna do yes. what he's been doing, do you think they take him at number two? Yes. I don't. I don't. I, I think they regret it. They move on. They take someone. And again, it, it's great that his play has improved. It has. Uh, but to me, some of it is empty calories. It, it certainly isn't. They're losing games right. uh, very consistently here. Uh, so I do think there's some regret here. Are they going to work through this? Probably because they have no choice. I don't think the guy's going to have great trade value, given Lavar's headache. But I think they regret this. And if this was draft night tonight. They wouldn't take Lonzo Ball. Is that this big of a distraction? No, no. I, I know you wait because as soon as Colin <laughs> says something, you 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 kind of you're, you're you very came perceptive. Up, I, I know. Yeah. I Listen, know. Regret is too strong of a word. Uh, the Lakers are relevant again, guys. How many Lakers segments did we do on this show last year? Uh, like five. That's not proof. And of okay, here. How about this? Is this proof, Jason? <laughs> they were on national TV 19 times last year. They're on 35 this year. More than the Spurs. More than the Celtics. The Lakers are relevant. They're going to get free agent meetings. Paul George wants to go to the Lakers. All this happening. After Lonzo got there, people want to play with him, Jim. Ingram's showing some signs. Kuzma looking good. The Lakers are going to get all the free agent meetings they need right now in the offseason. The Lakers cannot Not regret of Lonzo. it. Well, you, you go back to the question that Jason asked do they regret it? The people I talk to, no. Do they have to put a stamp on it and do something with LeVar? Yes. Do they take away his credential so now that he can't be in the family section? Do they? limit his exposure into the facility. Yes, they can do all of that. Lonzo is a special player from this perspective. Will he be a Jason kid? Uh, maybe not. But his teammates love playing for him. He does little things on the court that when he's off the court, you pay attention to. Does he have to finish better? Of course, he got to finish better. Does he have to shoot his free throw better? Yes. But internally, it's like a business. Magic Johnson is going to have to step up and just say, listen, this is how it's going to be. This is, they're not, they're not going to trade him because he put too much stock at the beginning, and this is the next superstar for the Lakers. And after one year, I don't think they can give but up. Jim, on him he's like a that. he's a Le, 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 Levar Ball is a straight up liar. He said to the Lakers in public, but, but here's a, but you're I, not, "I'm not going to upstage not, you guys." You're never going to control a voice like that. But I don't Jim, care what you do. He said it twice. I'm not going to upstage you. you. Then do? he said, you "You've got my." You're going to tell him to be quiet, and he's going to do what? He's going to talk more. But he's lying to you. He's been doing this for six months. You can't control him. Let me ask you this: A dad talks. Get over it. Jason Garrett has to deal with a loony owner. <laughs> NFL <laughs> coaches have to deal with anthem protests, uh, Kaepernick, advertise. Oh, oh, a player's dad questioned his coaching. Get over it. If you can't overcome that, you can't <laughs> coach in this league. There's kernels of truth in what you're saying. There's but, kernels of truth in everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in what you're saying. But again, I think if you look at what Rick Carlisle and the coaches are saying they're trying to head off something. Again, the AAU turning that the NBA into AAU ball and the parents having this large outside voice in their sport. It's dangerous, and they're trying to avoid it, and I think there's a reason to it. I don't think they see LeVar's mouth as uh, harmless because, again, and I think Jim is making the argument, talking to the people within the Lakers organization, everybody likes Lonzo and likes playing with I don't think that's a forever thing. I've seen too many people stand up before God and all their family and say they love somebody for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Again, it, well, it, so what's very... the solution then? It, it, you you trade Johnson. It, well, if you trade Lonzo, then what? No, no, no. Uh, I'm I mean, not... But I'm saying, and yeah, what's out there? But here's Rick Carlisle's thing: from a media perspective, they're going to cover Levar. Okay. From a coaching perspective, you can't expect that the media is going to jump on your side and say, "Well, you shouldn't." Whitlock is the media mishandled it. I think without question, from the very beginning. I, I feel like uh, LeVar Ball 
uh, is a clown. And I think he's been a clown from day one. And I thought too many people in the media everywhere uh, love the clown show. Hey, LeVar, come on and be a clown on our show and drive up ratings. And I felt like everything that's happening right now with LeVar, from Big Baller brand being a bust and being rated an F by the Better Business Bureau, uh, to him being a headache for the Lakers, uh, to him, to me, interfering with his son's professional growth and all that. was You could all see it from day one, but that's not how we treated uh, LeVar Ball. Uh, we wanted to just laugh, and no one wanted to strongly question him. Uh, I, I agree with Steve Kerr, and I thought Rick Carlisle's letter that he came out with yesterday was 1,000% on target. Uh, we shouldn't allow him these media platforms without putting context and some substance around it. That feels idealistic. The, the media doesn't dictate taste. We respond to it. They keep selling Big Macs because the public keeps buying them. Every time McDonald's goes to salads, <laughs> they go back to burgers. We don't dictate this There stuff. always has to be a line, though, Colin, or we should just run okay, porn so the, on this network well, if there's no standard. It makes $9 billion a year somebody's yeah, watching. No, I know. Okay, and if it wasn't for the FCC, maybe we would. The point being, we have a dad talking. If this is bringing down the Lakers, it ain't much of an organization. You got the Patriots this week, a 22-page article, coach, quarterback, owner. They're going to go out and beat Tennessee by two touchdowns. We're letting LeVar Ball? How loose and teetering is this ship called the Lakers? This wouldn't undo the Spurs. This wouldn't undo the Warriors. He's a goofball. How is this? It's a goofy dad talking from Lithuania. I, I think there's a kernel of something there. Uh, you know, I'm the kernel. Listen, tonight. guys, the news has changed over the last 20 years. The gatekeepers are totally different, okay? Steve Kerr lived in an era where the newspaper said, this is what you're going to read, and you had no choice but to eat it up. Now there are websites, and, and on our website, we've seen in 2017, the Ball family was a click machine. I know you guys don't want to hear that. Maybe it is a clown. And I would agree with you, he is, but people click on that. And we're in a business, just as a show is a business, and newspapers are a business, and they've realized you kind of got to change. It, it goes back to, Colin, you got little kids. What you want to give them versus what they need. They need the vegetables, do they not, Jim? Well, okay. they, need you the, need they, well they need the content, they need to have clicks, they need to have eyes on the TV stream. And, but this, it's a, more of a societal issue to me because of what's going on with social media. Again, we can all talk about Trump. We know what his past was like, but yet and still, whenever he says something, being the president, again, you can't equate the two, even if it's crazy, it's going to be reported. I don't care what it is. If he's a figure now because of his son, because he stepped out there, whatever he says, whether it's a minor outlet, it could be Twitter, it could be some local newspaper, it's going to be something there. But I'm going to go back to your point. At some point, the organization, I don't care if it's Fox, if it's the Lakers, if it's New England Patriots, they got to draw the line. When they draw the line, that quells everything else. But don't you just think it will naturally occur? Remember no, Tim won't, Tebow? No, natural. remember Tim it Tebow, Tim? With Tim Tebow was a he's, scrub. He's not going to stop, okay? Well, but you got to put in some parameters in there. You got to limit his ability to affect the team internally. What he says outside is one thing. But what happens but, but inside, Tebow was a backup on the Jets and the but, Patriots, and we covered him hardcore. We talked about Tim Tebow endlessly. He drove traffic he on the web line. endlessly. And then he evaporated, and he's gone. No, he's and, back. And, and, you see the TV commercial the other day? I, well, okay, I did he's see back. That, yeah. <laughs> but, but, Jim, to your point, you said you have to set parameters. So what if I'm the Lakers and no practice, no um, tickets, no, I ban him from Staples? Well, he just said something over in Lithuania, and it apparently <laughs> knocked the Again, ship off its course. You can't control but, that part. That's you what can, I'm you saying is, so deal with it. We're, we're arguing something completely different. That was the previous conversation. Right. This conversation is about media responsibility. And the media used to... You just couldn't. You just didn't print everything someone said. Yeah, the horse is out of the barn. Right. Now, there used to right. have to be some truth mm -hmm. uh, back or some substance. It had to be somewhat responsible. And so, look, the media has has not handled its job well, and the public doesn't trust us. But part of the reason why the public doesn't trust us because we've acted irresponsibly, and now anything goes. Mm -hmm. And what Carlisle and Steve Kerr are saying that. Organizations like Fox, like ESPN, LeVar Ball's uh, running off at the mouth, that's beneath you. Put that on the big lead. Put that on dead spin. But legitimate news organizations should hold the guy to a higher standard. They're not saying avoid his comments, but, but put him in context. Yeah, let, let they're me, competing. Years ago, here's the way it worked. Mm -hmm. 
basketball players played basketball. And then their agents got on cologne deals and clothes deals and on GQ and in magazines. So the players said, you give me the money, I'll do it. And the players loved it. And their agents loved it. And the league loved it because it made their players stars. So they've opened up the canvas. Just to just play. You played basketball, bought a ticket, went. The canvas has been opened. Fashion, media, hip-hop, music. Well, now part of that big opening you've fostered through your agents and your PR and marketing people is TMZ, cameras everywhere, goofy dad. You open this up. If you just want to play basketball, give back your shoe money, get off the TV shows, get off the cover of GQ. Basketball players welcomed the celebrity part of the game. Back of the uniform name, bigger than the front. That's why they're millionaires. Well, That's gotta, why they you, retire and golf a lot. You, you got to give that to David Stern because That's he knew right. that the league, in order for it to prosper, they had to promote the individuals. And so, so wait, hold on, Jason. If if all of a sudden the mainstream media just stopped covering LeVar Ball, do you think it's going to go away? Because it's going to be on Jay, blogs, Jason, social Jason, media. Did, I don't think you're listening. To it. I didn't say stop. I said there's. They can't cover LeVar Ball the same way the big lead does. But they know that's Rick where the Carl traffic is. I'm not, again, I'm not saying avoid it. What Rick Carlisle was saying, and he said it very clearly, put some context around. Mm -hmm. You can run his comments, but all, give the Lakers a chance to respond. Go to get some sources to put, find out whether what he's saying is true. He stated no one wants to play for Luke Walton. What send your reporters to go find is that accurate? In the and if 20, it's not yeah, remotely right. accurate, mm -hmm. don't use the quote from Lavar just you're because right. he spouted but off But that's in the, the twenty-four hour news cycle with the social media. It's sped up to and twenty-four what, minutes. I understand yeah, that. But what he's tough. arguing is that ESPN isn't the big lead. Their standards should be higher than yours. And I, there's some legitimacy to that. And yeah, I, I, I would put agree. Fox in that same group. Our standard has to be higher than a blog's. It's not. And that's why we have a reality star <laughs> president.